recording. Well, good morning. We're recording this Friday night, but good morning and happy Sabbath. We have Nicole Walker and Greg Pack and Zach Rue here. They've agreed to be the contestants on our latest show. <laughs> and I thank you guys for being willing to do this. We've just been having a little bit of fun going through highs and lows, just uh, hearing about their week. Uh, Nicole shared a fun story of, uh, she's actually doing an internship for those of you that don't know Nicole. She's uh, become part of our uh, church family and she's living near in the Ardmore Mercy Hospital. And on Thursday, a bunch of people from Ardmore came by, and I don't know if you've seen it on the news, where uh, police and citizens come by and they turn on their lights and uh, honk their horns and turn on their flashers. It's just a, a, a way of showing support to the healthcare workers. And she was just sharing that. And I just, you know, we hear about this in other parts of the country, but there's some of this even happening here, even though we haven't really experienced the coronavirus full bore yet. And uh, it's just been fun hearing what's been going on in their in their world. The reason we're having this video this morning is to just help you feel connected to your church family and, you know, three people at a time, basically. And so uh, we have some questions. Basically, I'll interview Greg and Nicole and Zach and uh, hear what's going on in their world, what's on their heart, what God is putting in their mind and how they're dealing with some of the anxieties and stresses that are facing us. So thank you for joining us this morning. And we're, we're going to go get started with Zach. So Zach, if you can uh, unmute. The thing that I was wanting to do this week that's a little different was um, I was thinking about the Bible story this week. Someone uh, I was talking to this week referenced it about the children of Israel and how the children of Israel were uh, you know, going into the desert. They were leaving Egypt and um, that's when Pharaoh changed his heart and decided he was going to chase them. And so here you are as the children of Israel, I think there's like 2 million of them and they're uh, fleeing from, uh, you know, Pharaoh. I'm sure they felt like that maybe they had can kind of let their guard down and relax. And all of a sudden they hear that the Egyptians are coming. And so they're here stuck between the Egyptians and the Red Sea. And, um, Sometimes the anxiety and fear and the, the gut reaction of what do you do when you can't go forward, but you can't go back? Just imagine what that kind of where you would have been in that situation. And so uh, that kind of feels like where we are right now in the sense of, in a, in a way, we're out of control about as much as they were. And so the first question that we were going to ask is it kind of aligned to the story of the children of Israel there at the Red Sea. And so I've asked each of uh, Zach and Nicole and, and, uh, uh, and Greg to think about the children of Israel and their situation. And Zach, what's one thing as you've kind of read through the story and absorbed it, what's one thing that you took away from that story that brings you courage for kind of our situation today? I think kind of uh, going back to what you said initially about the, um, well, first of all, I can relate, and I'll, I'll try to keep this to one thing, um, which may be hard for me, but um, I think I can certainly relate to the that feeling of anxiety of seeing it coming. And, you know, those, those of you who know me uh, better, uh, might know that I am very much of a planning person. I like to uh, plan things out ahead of time, feel like I'm in control. And that extends to uh, planning what to worry about sometimes, which is <laughs> <laughs> And so I, I feel like probably if I were in the uh, Children of Israel at that time, I would have been saying, you know, there's a good chance Pharaoh might not uh, just let us go that easily. He might come after us. Oh, see, I told you. I, we should have been worried, but it doesn't change the fact there's nothing they could do about it. Um, so I think uh, that's one as that's kind of one just relating to them aspect that I can kind of identify if I were there, that's probably how I would have been feeling. Maybe partly because it's how I've been feeling now. It's like, well, there's this, you know, pandemic situation and it's, I've been watching it um, maybe even too much for on the news and uh, as, as it's developed. 
uh, and seeing it coming and there's nothing really that I can do. But I think the mm -hmm. encouraging thing that builds out of that, at least for me, is, you know, there may even be more things. I mean, so we only see what has come up to this point and there might be more challenges that come up, you know, this coming month or the month after that, that, you know, we're not gonna know how to deal with. But the thing that's encouraging about that story to me is when things seemed completely impossible, I mean, you can't get much more desperate than the sea on one side, an army coming to uh, probably kill you on the other, and right. you know, millions of people, it's not like you can act exactly uh, just slip, you know, slip away. And even in that scenario, um, God's not limited to what he can do um, for us. And mm. it might be a miraculous rescue. It might not, that rescue might not look exactly like we pictured, but we can trust that um, he does have a plan. He is still in control even when um, our vision of, oh, here are the options, we're out of them. Uh, God doesn't, mm -hmm. God's not limited to what we think are options. <laughs> Excellent. No, that's, that really that's encouraging in the face of this because, you know, my, you know, my plans for this month, my plans for, you know, this summer, they all kind of came tumbling down and, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty about, you know, what happens next. And uh, knowing that, you know, even in, even in the face of something terrible like this, uh, God's still there uh, taking care of me. So, thank you for sharing that, Zach. No, that's that's I, I resonate, especially the control piece. When you're out of control, that's a that's a. I don't know. We all have the illusion that we're in control, but then when you get into a situation like this, and you really realize you're not, even when you thought you're in control, you probably really weren't. But uh, these times really stretch your trust muscle. Mm -hmm. Nicole, how about you? As you're thinking about the children of Israel and um, that situation, is there a, a piece of that story that brings you courage as you're kind of thinking about where you are right now and what piece of it speaks to you the most? Um, there are I think several dimensions of thinking about it, like that I mentioned, you know, we don't know what's coming, but I feel like I've kind of been in this place in my life before. Um, mm. Most of you know that, you know, I, not that, not that there's anything wrong with Oklahoma. It's been a wonderful experience, <laughs> but I did not plan on coming to Oklahoma. Um, I was uh, applying to other schools, applying to Yale, applying to Florida Hospital. And, um, and they got to a point where I was accepted to another hospital and I had to change directions very rapidly. And it was just like three days of, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna live. I have no idea what's going on. I had made this plan and, you know, life just came at me fast. So, now that we're going through the corona thing, I feel kind of, I guess, consciously I'm actually not worried because I'm like, oh, we've been through this before. Okay, God, mm. but I'm gonna sit back and you, I'm gonna eat some popcorn. Okay, what's happening next? <laughs> so I don't feel the active anxiety that most people are, I work with, they're like, well, what about this, what about this? But mm. I do um, realize that I have some maybe subconscious. Um, Mr. Siler had said it last week. He's woken up like four in the morning and, you know, your thoughts are, and I'm like, oh, that's happening to someone else. So as I've been waking up at two in the morning and four in the morning, <laughs> you know, like I'm not going to go start exercising at <laughs> two in the morning. Um, I've just been using that time to do devotions and, Mm. realizing, you know, even though I don't overtly feel very anxious, um, because I have seen God work in the past, apparently there is some residue there. 
and mm. I'm trying to use that time that I'm awake to, you know, read. And I did unplug about two weeks ago. I was just like, I'm, I'm good. I just, I go to one site for like 10 minutes a day, check up. Okay, I'm done. So that's kept some of the, the anxiety down. But I think as you walk with God through life and you see his hand working, then it's a lot easier to at least cog in the front of your mind and say, okay, this is an opportunity for God to really show out. Because if you thought of it, if Moses went there the first time, and like, hey, let God's people go. Most and Pharaoh was just like, you know, you're right. <laughs> Apologies. Take what you need. It's been great. You know, like there wouldn't be, you know, a huge story that we talk about, you know, the Red Sea experience. You know, I think God allows some of that struggle to, to build your faith muscles and mm. help you to understand, like, I'm not just a little God who does a little thing. I'm a big God who does big things. And when everything is hopeless, that's when I step in and start working. So it's mm. very encouraging. And actually, I was reading this story for devotions anyway. Um, just kind of looking in the Bible for a different crisis, different how do people deal with. Because I'm, I'm thinking about, I had a plan that I was going to be completely hired and finish my internship at the end of April. And I'm just like, um... <laughs> could still happen because God is full of surprises, but it just kind of, okay, well, can't really go anywhere. I can't really uh, do what I thought I was going to do. So apparently God has other plans, just like he did with Oklahoma. And that's been a wonderful experience. So it's kind of want to keep focused on what God can do instead of what's mm. happening. Excellent. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, that's, that's, um, the idea that he had this idea up his sleeve to let them walk across the, the sea like that probably didn't enter their mind at all. So, uh, yeah, God, God can do some amazing things and he can do that type of stuff for us. How about you, Greg? What, what was your thinking about the children of Israel story? Is there any, what was your takeaway? If there's a, like the headline for you, what's the headline for you as you, you know, think about that and look to look to that story for encouragement. I think the takeaway would be in verse 13 of, of that chapter, but leading up to that, I'm thinking of the anxiety and what most people are feeling right now during this time. <clears throat> if, if those that would say they're not anxious at least a little bit, I'm not sure they know the true meaning of anxiety because, you know, there's a healthy anxiety, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, as Christians, I think we look to scripture and to experience, as Nicole said, in your walk with God to get us through that. But I think of the children of Israel, they didn't have any scripture because Moses wrote the first five books. So they had nothing to read per se. They did have stories and what had been passed down from generation to generation. So they had a general understanding. But what I really like is, is what Moses said in verse 13 when they were there between the Egyptians, between the sea, and they thought, you know, what are we going to do? He said, fear ye not. First thing is mm. don't fear, don't worry. Stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. So Christ was using Moses here to tell them in person what we can read today so many places in scripture in a time of anxiety and worry and doubt and fear that don't do this you know christ is still in control um, so they still had a lot to learn but it, at that time I, I would think that was something they really needed to hear fear not and stand still exactly standing still is like the exact opposite of what we typically want to do in the middle yeah. of a crisis Yes, and I don't know that it's all just physically still. I think it's emotionally. Mm. Uh, it's it's being still in your mind and, you know, just stop. Everything about you just stop at that moment. Excellent. Thank you, Greg. I uh, I resonate with that. I, I find that um, God's nudged me that, 
I'm tempted to run out ahead of him instead of following him. I tend to run ahead and I've caught myself doing that several times in the past few weeks. And it's like, oh God, it's a virus. I mean, it's a it's a pandemic. I mean, I, I should be you know running. And it's no, you need to be still and and follow. And as long as you're behind, your 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 mindset is different. Kind of like what you said. That's that was that's powerful. Being still. Thank you for that, Greg. All right, Zach, we're coming back to you um, with a little more of a storytelling opportunity. So, what's the song or a hymn that's especially encouraging to you? I think a lot of people are encouraged by music, and so. What's uh, what's a song or a hymn, and maybe what what when you think of that, what's a what's maybe the lyric or lyrics that really speak to you and, and bring you the most courage in times like this? Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, this song that I was thinking of, um, which incidentally I I realized when I was thinking of songs that I had not listened to this one specifically like uh, since this started, so. Maybe it's uh, cheating a little bit, but I think just thinking of the idea of this song, I think um, it applies. It actually builds perfectly into what we were just talking about, um, and hopefully I didn't steal anyone else's, um, but uh, Be Still My Soul. Um, mm. Because in times of when I've had the most personal struggle with anxiety, whether it's from, you know, well, in the past, usually it's not from some like global pandemic thing. It's usually from some uh, struggle, maybe um, some a relationship, family or otherwise in my life that's not going well and I'm, you know, stressed about that or uh, school related things when I was in college or different things. But so through, through a variety of situations, um, this one, this song has really spoken to me because it's not that I don't believe that God has the power to uh, work for me or to give me peace in the middle of trials. It's the, the problem is that I forget. So I, you know, mm. I'm in the middle of some, you know, a battlefield um, emotionally and, you know, there's, there's stress going on. There's, um, you know, maybe new things that are going on to cause more stress and, kind of what's been, I mean, we touched on this a little bit already, but I get worked up into it. So, you know, oh, there's this thing that comes on. Oh, there's this new piece of news. Well, now we have to do this. And I get so caught up in responding to every little thing that happens that I, my focus becomes on that. And I, of course, I think, hey, well, it's important for it to be on that. I need to be able to respond to this stuff. But what I forget is that if I let, and I think, I think there is an appropriate amount of awareness of what's going on around us, but I think right. God's, not, God's not calling us to be, oh, just be blind to everything that happens around you. Um, it's more, yes, what's happening might be terrible, but you, but don't focus on that, focus on me and I will give you peace in the middle of the storm, even if the storm still is going on around you. Um, so I think as far as specific lyrics in the song, I mean, the whole song is really good. Um, mm. I think, uh, here, let me, I, I have the hymnal here. Let me just read, okay. Um, so, on the second verse in the hymnal, and there would uh, starts out with, uh, "Be still, my soul; thy God doth undertake to guide the future as He has the past. Mm -hmm. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul; the winds and waves, the waves and winds still know His voice who ruled them while He dwelt below. And it reminds me." A little bit also this is I think this is applicable to uh, trials in general but just of that Ellen White quote in Desire of Ages where she's talking about uh, John the Baptist and I can't quote it perfectly from memory but basically if we could see the end from the beginning that um, that we would choose nothing different and mm. something like that's really you know really hard for me to think well you know how would 
how would I have chosen this? What crazy reason would there be for, for being okay with this? And it doesn't mean that necessarily that I have to like this or that I would have to like it if I saw the end from the beginning. But as far as what God allows to come our way, um, you know, the, there's, there's blessings to be found even in the midst of this. I guess that's how I'd say it. Um, this may be a terrible thing, but if God can bring me blessings out of it, you bless, blessings to you out of it um, in the midst of a trial, um, then I think it will all be uh, worth it in the end. And I can say even at this point, there's opportunities that I've had, uh, you know, the quiet of working from home, um, having more time to uh, relax, to uh, contemplate and pray and things, and even even just daily things of, oh, I have more time to eat healthfully now and uh, make all my food at home uh, better than I was doing before and things like that. Um, so there's there's blessings even in the middle of the storm. So. Well said. Thank you, Zach. Nicole, how about you? When you think of a favorite hymn or a song, is there one that comes to mind? Um, I have a long list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think the one that I like the most, or at least I've sang more this week, um, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. Do you guys know that one? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I learned a lot of my hymns from my grandmother, so sometimes we were like, where is that song? <laughs> um, but in the second verse, it says, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. And he cheers each winding path I tread. It gives me strength for every trial and feeds me with the living bread. Um, mm. So kind of what Zach said about that quote from um, Spirit of Prophecy that talked about we wouldn't choose another way. I think for me, it's because the challenges bring me closer to God. And mm. that's not for anything. Um, whether it was, you know, friends, family, moving, um, there's challenges in life. And there's always little things that God does to kind of cheer me up along the way. And again, they're not huge. They're um, like with the headlights uh, last night, but around the hospital there is a really good smelling bush it didn't look like much in the winter time but now that it's spring it's just kind of a, a little bush it's got white flowers on it but it smells amazing so you know just being able to smell it every day as i go out and walk um being able to and and god just knows like what to do like little little sweet things that make me think, wow, you know, God is still providing for me and looking out for me and, you know, cheering me up like there's something you can enjoy today. And when I think of that song, like God is leading me, you know, I want to follow him no matter where he's going. I mean, God could tell me to do just about anything right now. And I'd be like, okay, game on, let's go. Um, because I know that if he's leading me, then he's going to carry me or sustain me or provide whatever I need. Um, whether in the form of like other people or work or, you know, if he needs to send a raven, he's done that too. So it's just, yeah. I want to just stay in step with God. And I think these challenges, whatever they are, draws closer to God. So that's why I like that song. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Greg, how about you? Well, great minds seem to think alike. So Zachary, I too chose to be still myself. Uh, I really like the fourth stanza of it where it says, be still my soul. The hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief and fear are gone. 
the older I get, the easier it is to sort of understand this in the sense mm. that no, ma no matter what happens, um, if we're right with the Lord, it will be okay. It will work out. Um, there's going to be many that do not survive this. I hope they have that relationship and they know their Lord and the resurrection is coming for them, the first one. As a younger person, um, it's not always so easy to read this and cherish it or make a lot of sense out of it. But mm -hmm. um, that just, that speaks to me. And like I say, sort of at the end of the day, as they say, just be right with the Lord. He will provide mm -hmm. and all will be well. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. There's something about lyrics to songs. I don't know what it is, but they they can have a profound impact on you. I remember I woke up this morning uh, with, for some reason, a mighty fortress is our God. Um, and there was one lyric that was very clear in my head. It was along the lines, I'm not sure if I'm going to quote it precisely, but about when in our strength we confide our striving would be losing and it just reminds me that all my striving anything i'm trying to do to kind of assert control uh, is losing and uh, there's a whole bunch of other great lines in that song but uh, the, even the title in and of itself is the mighty fortress is our god is, is a great uh, line to have in our back of our minds during uh, a crisis like this We've gotten to our last question. And the last question is really just a, a little opportunity for you to share a Bible promise or a passage, or maybe even a quote that's been bringing you the most encouragement. Everyone has, it seems like a quote or a Bible promise or something that they've read in the recent past that really kind of um, brings them hope, brings them calm and uh, trust kind of stirs their heart. So I just wanted to hear what you guys had to say about that. So again, let's start with Zach. Zach, when it comes to a Bible promise or passages or quote, what's something that's been on your mind lately that, that has really um, brought you peace and calm and comfort? Um, so there's, there's a number that I could pick from, I think, but um, one that uh, was, has been meaningful to me recently um, not only because it references uh, hiding out, um, but it's in uh, Psalm 32, um, and I'll just read a couple verses here. Um, so I'm, I'm going to read actually a little bit from the beginning of the psalm and then um, the verse that, or section I've selected. So at the beginning of the psalm, he says, uh, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and whose spirit there is no guile. And he goes on to talk about how, how he got that way. He acknowledged his sin, and he confessed his transgressions, and God forgave him. So, and then the promise, the result of doing that, thou art my hiding, uh, verse 7, thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble, thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. So I think as for a promise in this time, well, in one, uh, in, a, in a sense, we're literally uh, hiding out in our houses uh, from a virus. Um, but, <laughs> but ultimately, even that's not going to, uh, that alone will not save us. And it, it might protect us medically, and it's, you know, maybe a smart thing to do. But ultimately... Um, my hiding place uh, is can be God, and that's that can even be true in an emotional sense as well. When there's all this stress, and um, I think you know, I have what you might say is to some degree a weakness in uh, wanting to keep apprised of all the latest things that are going on, and, and that's a stressful mm -hmm. thing. And there, there have been a couple times this week that. Um, I've just, you know, you know, put away my phone, uh, and just, you know, I can't exactly, uh, I don't, I don't live out in the country, so it's not exactly, I can, uh, go for a walk in the fresh, uh, 
you know, woods or something. But even just in the backyard, it's been nice weather this week. You know, go sit out in the backyard and just enjoy the fresh air. And, you know, even just thinking about other things, uh, just from, even if they're not spiritual things, that's refreshing. But just, you know, and praying to God about this as a refuge that, you know, I am very much uh, powerless when it comes to this. Um, mm -hmm. And I think if one thing that, if there's one thing that I've been shown uh, by this whole experience so far, it's that I don't think I do trust God enough for these types of things, but this is a learning opportunity to put, start putting it into practice. So trying to um, claim that promise of him as my hiding place um, emotionally and even, you know, even res with respect to the physical world, um, that's been something that has been meaningful to me this week, even if I, I am still learning how to put it into uh, practice. Yeah, well said. Thank you, Zach. I, it reminds me of a quote. There's a book I read by a guy named, um, uh, his name's blanking, um, Dennis Smith. And it, his quote was on trust. And it was, you won't learn to trust him until you have the opportunity to trust him. And so you really don't learn it. It's, it's like a muscle. You don't, until you use it, you're not going to build it. Dude, Thank you for sharing that, Zach. Right. What was that? It, that's, that's true for other relationships too. Yeah, no, absolutely. Nicole, how about you? What's, what's a, a promise or a passage or a quote that, that just is your rock and, and brings you the most comfort and courage? Um, I don't know if it's a, as much comfort as, as, uh, it's, it's kind of a inspiration, um, mm. Proverbs three, and it talks about, you know, wisdom in, in putting God at the center of your life or at the front or depending on which way mm -hmm. um, but everyone knows verse five and six. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into their own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Um, so that kind of is comforting in the fact that if my focus is God, um, you know, he will make my path straight. He will make my path mm. smooth. He will lead me where to go. And we think of different um, places in the Bible where people did like, you want me to do what, Lord? You know, and, and it took a certain amount of faith to trust God to do that odd thing or go to the, you know, go here or, or march around Jericho. I've never taken over a city by marching around it. But <laughs> um, having acknowledge God in every area of my life, not holding back or saying, well, you know, God, you can help me out in this, but yeah, leave this, leave this part to me. I got it. I got mm -hmm. it. Um, but, you know, in all your ways, acknowledging God and allowing him to refine you um, is a really good comfort to me because it's not just, I guess it's, I, I like the process. So the person who moves a lot, um, having internal stability is really important. So mm -hmm. knowing that, you know, God's with me for the long haul, you know, good or bad, he's going to keep working on me and keep refining me, just helping me develop into, you know, a citizen of heaven. And all I have to do is just say yes in every area of my life. It's... Mm. It, it makes the outer noise of whatever is going on a lot less intense. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. There's a, there's a version, I forget what version it is, but it, it's about the piece of trusting the Lord with all your, how, your heart and don't try and figure everything out on your own. You know, it's a more contemporary version, but it's you know we're so prone to doing that. And uh, he says, "Look, I'll I'll figure it out. You don't you don't need to do that. It's on me." 
Greg, how about you? You get to have the last word on this on this question. What's a what's something that really speaks to you? Something in the Bible or a quote or passage? Well, the text that really spoke to me, I, I'm putting it in context in the sense that one thing that is unique about this pandemic to me is mm. that very few things in the world affect everyone in the world, or there's very few mm. things. Every nation, tribe, kindred, tongue, and people. Um, we know that the mark of the beast and the time of trouble, stuff like that, will impact everyone, positive or negative. Um, but anyway, in, in choosing that, I, I chose Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And that covers so many things so many times, then I just hope I can hold on to that, live up to it. Mm. Absolutely. No, that's the thing that, the reason why I find it such an interesting question is everyone has their verse or their passage that really speaks to them. And I, I find that it's interesting when you're going through um, a difficult time, all of a sudden those those words are even more poignant. You know, when you're, everything's kind of going well, those words are nice. But when they, when you're going through uh, something difficult, they really uh, speak to you and you actually feel it um, in a way that maybe when, not so much when things are, are good. Thank you for contributing. I know that there's people that are watching this that have resonated with what you've shared. And I think the neat, it's neat to have a forum where we can share and kind of learn from each other and realize that we're not in this alone. Everyone, you know, whether you know, everyone's experience is a little different, but yet in a lot of ways we're very similar. And so uh, this is a challenging time. We can't put a, a, you know, lipstick on a pig. It's, it's a challenging time and we don't know how this is going to go. And uh, I just wanted to um, kind of, um, share a prayer together. Um, we've at our church at Arbuckle View, we've been having an emphasis on prayer. And so at the end of this video, we'll have uh, the Siler family singing our theme song, uh, the Lord's Prayer. And so that will be attached to this video again this week. But uh, Greg, I was wondering if you'd mind saying a prayer to close us out. And uh, if you would specifically keep uh, the health professionals, including Nicole, but others. We have Dr. Shockey, who's, again, I don't know where what's his situation, but we have other health professionals, Brock Meyer down in Ardmore, as well as others, uh, Dr. Sabangan. We have another people that we know really well that are going to be facing this uh, head on. We can, some of us can retreat in our homes in whatever safety that is, but uh, some of these folks, their their opportunity to serve will be um, on the front lines. And so uh, if you would, along with whatever you choose to pray about, please keep them in, in prayer as we finish up today. Okay. Father in heaven, we are certainly in a very unique time in this world's history. This is something that this generation has not experienced before. And we ask that you would be with each one of us as we face this day by day and week by week. Please give us courage, give us hope, give us strength. Help us to be still and know that you are God and you are there. You love us. You have made many promises to us and help us just to put full faith in you that no matter the outcome, your will will be done. We think of those that are in a sense on the front line. It is a war. It's a different type of war. Not one that we're used to or accustomed to, but there are many who are literally risking their lives to save other people's lives. Mm. This is very touching and in a sense, they're carrying out your saying that a man giving his life for his friend, there is no greater love. We ask that you would be with them in a very special way. Uphold them, protect them, 
Give them strength and courage. Be with them in a mighty way. Be with our nation as a whole and those around the world who face this. We just ask that it would be over as soon as possible, that you would be with those who have lost loved ones, give them comfort. May they find your truth about what has happened to their loved ones. Be with those making decisions, our leaders, those trying to find cures and treatments, give them wisdom as well. And just be with each of us to do our part in upholding you in getting through this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. Have a happy Sabbath. Uh, also, have note in this email that you're receiving this link, uh, you'll also have access to a special music a number day by day. For those of you who watched our video last week, Caleb. Um, that's his favorite song. Caleb Pack's favorite song is Day by Day. And so he's uh, uh, performed a rendition that will also be accompanying this video. So keep an eye out for that. It'll definitely encourage you today. So thank you for joining us and uh, have a happy Sabbath. deliver